How do you remove a mysterious cylinder from a mini M&M's tube filled with melted butter and microwaved mashed bananas without harming the cylinder? This is the question that Smart Calendar 1874 posted to Ask Reddit on December 5th of 2022. And three months ago, I decided to find the answer. The original Reddit post received hundreds of responses, some helpful, offering possible solutions, some hypothesized about what the cylinder was, and even one tried to pin blame for the whole ordeal on the quote, sexy green M&M. The truth is, Smart Calendar is the only one that knows what happened that day. And after a few hours of suggestions, they disappeared with a single mysterious word. Hospital. What they meant by this remains an enigma. But before vanishing, they did provide some very useful details about the cylinder itself that would help me to recreate what they called their experiment. First, with it being an experiment, I assume that they're a scientist, or at the very least have an interest in steam. Second, the cylinder is 5.1 inches in length and about 4.5 inches in girth. Apparently, English isn't their first language and they didn't know the word circumference. Either way, it has a diameter of about 1.5 inches. They also said that it's made of primarily carbon and a variety of other organic compounds. This tells me that it's most likely either a hard wood-like texture or a softer one similar to flesh. Since wood is less likely to create a seal and get stuck, I figured that the softer texture was the safe bet. Fortunately, there's a material that works perfectly for this. Silicone. Even better, there are companies that specialize in making vaguely cylindrical shapes out of silicone. They're even meant to replicate the texture of flesh. So I reached out to a few of them and asked if they'd be interested in sponsoring the project. Unfortunately, none wanted to be involved with my experiment, which is why they're all blurred on screen. Without professional manufacturing, I had to do it myself. I may not be an expert at Blender, but within an hour, I was able to create a CAD file that I was happy with. The only problem was that my 3D printer had decided to go full-time as a spaghetti chef. Luckily, I was able to get an old Prusa from a friend, and compared to my previous printer that required constant tinkering, it felt like cheating. So if you're watching this, Mr. Prusa, I've got a spot in my shop that is the perfect size for a Prusa XL promotion. Call me. Anyways, I printed out the cylinder and began carefully sanding. Then I got out some clay and began to encase half of the cylinder in the stuff. As I worked, I hypothesized what experiments Smart Calendar 1874 had been working on. I like to imagine that he was designing a way of storing single-serving bratwurst using recycled materials. But I don't know how the mashed bananas would fit in with that theory. With the edges smoothed and the sides squared off, I used a hot glue gun and cardboard to form a box. The last time I did this, I rushed through this part and ended up making a mess, so I was much more careful this time. Then I mixed up a batch of silicone and poured it over the cylinder. After letting the silicone cure, I removed the cardboard and the clay and flipped it over to repeat the process. Perhaps Smart Calendar had used the tube to store a pickle for lunch and it was now stuck. I know pickles aren't exactly a cylinder, but maybe they were approximating. When the second batch of silicone had cured, I realized there was a problem. For some reason, the two halves of the mold had fused together and entombed the cylinder inside. At first, I blamed myself for forgetting to spray mold release, but when I looked at my footage, I realized I had, so I don't really know what happened here. Luckily, I was able to use an X-Acto knife to remove the cylinder and still have a semi-usable mold. Once again, I used mold release and poured in more silicone, praying that it wouldn't all fuse together into a single block, forcing me to restart. When I eventually end the video, I wanted to cap it all off with a quote from an expert, offering insight and inspiration. And at first, I looked to the words of famed candy enthusiast turned poet, Marshall Bruce Mathers III. So won't the real Slim Shady please stand up, please stand up, please stand up. The quote turned out to be both confusing and a poor fit for this story, so I decided to keep looking, but we'll get to that later. And by this point, the silicone had cured. Luckily, it hadn't fused this time, so I not only had a cylinder, but a new problem as well. It was too big. No matter what I tried, I couldn't get it to fit inside the tube. Now, M&Ms come in several size tubes, and I don't know what size Smart Calendar used for their experiment. What I did know was that I had 20 tubes in this size and a dwindling budget. So I decided to redesign the cylinder to get stuck in the tubes that I had. Before, I had the measurements from the post to go off of, but for this one, I would have to make new ones. 
first, I needed to make a test cone, kind of like the ones that they use for sizing rings. Except in this case, it was for cylinders. I also wanted to come up with a better method for making molds because the way I was making them consumed a lot of both time and materials. My first attempt was to 3D print the size tester and cast it in resin. This worked great, except for the fact that it got stuck in the resin like Excalibur. The second method was to 3D print an outer mold and then use silicone to make an inner mold. This would mean that it would use less silicone and completely eliminate mold lines. And it worked. I was able to use the size tester to measure the exact girth at which the cylinder would get stuck. Now, as great as Blender is, I learned that it's not good at making molds. So I tried out Tinkercad, another CAD software that I had heard was good for beginners. If you asked an engineer to make a mold using the tools I had, they would probably tell you to make a 3D printed two-part mold. And I even had several engineers tell me to do exactly that. But I knew better. I knew I could refine my method into an even better way to make molds, and after a month and a half, I did. It's a 3D printed two-part mold, like the engineer suggested, but now it has a little trough to put hot glue around the outside so it doesn't leak. The engineers were basically right. I'll be putting up a video on my Patreon soon about the whole mold design process as well as the 3D models for the mold if you want to make your own. If you want to support the channel and see some exclusive videos, please check it out. I can't express how much it means to me. With my new mold done, I poured in the silicone and impatiently waited for it to cure. When the cylinder had hardened, I pulled it out and used an X-Acto knife to trim the flash. The month and a half of mold designing was so that I could skip this five minute step, and honestly, I felt pretty silly about the whole thing. Almost as silly as the moment when I was five weeks into the process and accidentally pushed the Minecraft button on Tinkercad realizing that I was using software designed for children. In the end, none of that mattered though, so I printed out four more molds and spent the next couple of days making cylinders. Thank you for contacting M&M's customer care. If you need further assistance, please press four for the next available special. Thank you for calling M&M's. My name is Myra, which would be the pleasure of speaking with. Hi, my name is Nate. Thank you, and how may I help you? I've got a bit of a weird issue. I've got a cylinder that's stuck inside one of your mini M&M's tubes, and I'm trying to figure out a way to get it out. Okay. Um, what do you mean, a cylinder? Uh, it's kind of a soft material, kind of like silicone, and, and, and it's stuck in there. I'm trying to get it out without damaging it. In one of our m and tubes? Yes. Okay, um... I'm not exactly too sure how we will be able to help you with that, sir. Okay, um, do you, do, do you have a recommendation on who I should call? Is it something that you ordered from us? Uh, the, the M&M's tube was. The, the cylinder was not. Um, yeah, so there's nobody that would be able to help you if you got something of yours personally stuck in one of our tubes. Uh, uh okay, I'll start looking somewhere else for an answer then. Thank you. At first, I was worried because even with the hot butter and bananas, the cylinders could be easily removed. But after a couple of minutes, they cooled off and created negative pressure inside the tube, rendering the cylinder stuck. The first method of removal that I tried is what I like to call caveman mode. All it really achieved was sending bits of banana and shards of plastic all over my cutting mat. I needed something with more precision, so I tried a knife. I had to be careful not to cut the cylinder with it, but it worked. Mazel tov. The only catch is that I took advantage of the air gap at the end. In the original post, Smart Calendar said that the cylinder was touching the end of the tube. So while it worked for me, I don't think this one counts. Another popular suggestion on the thread was to do jumping jacks. Now, I don't know exactly how this was supposed to work, but I guess that the rapid movements were meant to fling the cylinder out of the tube. They did not. I thought maybe a quick pulling motion would work, so I hot glued zip ties to the end of the tube to make a loop and then put a harness on my cap. The idea was to secure the tube to his leash and throw a treat while I held onto the cylinder. Unfortunately, it seems that there was a defect in the design of the harness because it rendered him immobile, so this didn't work. 
I went back to my workshop and began grabbing random tools in the hope that they would prove useful. At first, the hammer seemed to do nothing at all, but suddenly the cylinder popped out completely unharmed. I figured that if a manual tool worked well, then power tools must be even better. This hypothesis proved false. The saw had almost no precision and only succeeded in making a mess of banana and plastic. The sander was even worse. Not only did it damage the cylinder, but it didn't even manage to remove it from the tube. At first, I thought my Dremel had worked, but as I cleaned the butter and banana off the freed cylinder, I found a cut running all the way down the side of it. I thought maybe I was going from the wrong direction, so I clamped the cylinder in my drill press and gave that a shot. Initially, it didn't work, so I tried a larger drill bit, but the vise lost its grip and I had to turn it off. It took me a moment to realize it, but the cylinder had actually been flung out of the M&M tube. I was about to call it a success when I realized that the process had torn the tip of the cylinder up. It wasn't a total loss though. While I had tried to secure the cylinder in the vise, I noticed that the pressure it put on the tube was starting to squeeze it out. So I tried again, but this time I didn't stop squeezing. And it worked. I just had to keep turning the vise and eventually it simply popped out. This gave me an idea. Not everyone has access to a vise, but a lot of people have access to cars. So I decided to check to see if this same method worked vehicularly. The first time I tried it, the entire thing just popped out from under the wheel and I had to stop out of fear of running over my camera. The second time I tried, I heard a pop and was happy to find that it had worked. While both of these methods were successful, I don't know if the actual cylinder can withstand this kind of force, so I kept testing. Adding pressure had worked, so I wondered what would happen if I used negative pressure. I put it in my vacuum chamber, and nothing happened. It impotently sat in there for over half an hour, and it might as well have not been in the chamber at all. I had genuinely thought that this was going to work, and I was starting to feel disheartened. So I looked for new inspiration. I still hadn't found that quote for the end of the video, but I was listening to American Prometheus, and I found one by Robert Oppenheimer that fit much better than the Eminem quote from earlier. There must be no barriers to freedom of inquiry. There is no place for dogma in science. The scientist is free, and must be free, to ask any question, to doubt any assertion, to seek for any evidence, to correct any errors. While his words didn't quite fit the video, they did inspire me to try a different approach. Chemistry. Acetone is famous for being able to melt plastic, but whatever these tubes are made of seems to be resistant to it. After soaking for two days, it had no effect. If chemistry wouldn't work, then maybe temperature would, so I got out my heat gun. At first, nothing happened, so I turned it up and slowly it began to work. The plastic tube had a lower melting point than the cylinder, but in the end, it just melted onto the silicone, ensuring that they would never separate. I figured that maybe it needed to be even hotter, so I got out a butane torch. And it did a much better job of melting the plastic. The only problem is that the cylinder was definitely harmed in the process. It also made my garage smell like melted plastic and chocolate banana bread. Weirdly, it also kept burning for nearly 10 minutes after I had turned off the torch. I think it was the butter. Anyways, I needed something that was both hot, but had enough precision to not burn the cylinder. So I got out my soldering iron. Now, this isn't the one I use for actual soldering. I have a good one for that. This is the $10 one that I use for things like wood burning or melting plastic. And it worked well here. I don't know if the real cylinder could withstand brief contact with 500 degree metal, but the silicone one could. On the off chance that the real one couldn't though, I kept searching. Another popular suggestion from the original thread was to take a bath. While it did a great job of clearing my head, it didn't solve the problem, but it did give me the idea to try hotter water. And while that did work, it still had the same problem as the soldering iron. I didn't know if the cylinder could withstand that much heat. So I decided to go back to the acetone. Someone on Reddit had suggested a very different use for it. You see, it's flammable, really flammable. So I used the soldering iron to make a hole at the end of the tube and filled it with acetone using a syringe. Then I put on gloves and got behind a protective shield and lit it, hoping that the rapidly igniting chemical would push the cylinder out. 
That was the idea, at least. In reality, it didn't really even ignite. And once again, I was left feeling silly. At this point, I was down to a single tube, and I still didn't have a method that could remove the cylinder without some sort of caveat. But then, I remembered the final word of Smart Calendar 1874. Hospital. There is a tool that pretty much every hospital in America has that is almost purpose-built for this exact situation. A cast saw. While at a glance, it looks like it could cut through just about anything, the rapidly oscillating blade makes such small movements that the natural flexibility of skin prevents it from doing damage. This means that it can cut through rigid materials like plaster or wood, but leave softer materials like skin or silicone unharmed. While I couldn't find a hospital willing to donate their cast saw to my experiment, I realized that I could just buy one online. We scientists are driven by our demand for knowledge, an insatiable hunger that has blessed humanity with miracles and cursed us with atrocities. Science has no conscience, no morals. It is what we give it, and it deserves nothing less than the best of ourselves. We are scientists, engineers, artists, makers, and fools. We have caged the photon, saddled fire to carry humanity to the stars, and coerced the atom into reducing two cities to ash. We are capable of the incredible and terrifying. And yet, we must always remember one thing. Never stick your cylinder in a tube of mini M&Ms.